We begin this morning with the latest out of Washington, where lawmakers have passed that $900 spending bill. And joining us now to discuss is Greg Valier. He is the chief U.S. policy strategist over at AGF Investments. Greg, great to speak with you this morning. Um, I'd love to begin our conversation by just talking about the process between the end of July and last night when we finally got additional stimulus through. Um, if in the end this met, exceeded, uh, was below your expectations of, of what it seemed the economy needed um, after the CARES Act was, was passed back in the spring. Yeah, it was quite a dysfunctional stretch of six months or so not being able to get anything done. I think you've got to say the bottom line is that a first quarter recession has uh, diminished as a likelihood, but it's not totally dead. I think the second quarter is going to need some help as well. So I'm in the camp that would argue that it wasn't enough and we're going to need more. Hey, Greg, it's Julie here. So are we going to get more? I guess is the next question. I mean, what can we extrapolate from what looked from the outside like a very messy, contentious process to even get this bill done? Um, and obviously, there'll be a new Congress coming soon. But what can we sort of surmise about the what the process is going to look like? Well, I think, Julie, in a nutshell, it all depends on Georgia, on the runoffs. If you get the Democrats winning both seats, we'll get a pretty good sized stimulus bill because the Democrats will control the Senate. If the Republicans win one or both, uh, we'll get a very modest stimulus bill. But I think there still are things that need to be addressed. Unemployment benefits, for example, expire on March 14th. You've got no resolution on state and local government aid, and you've got no resolution on liability protection. So I do think there's enough there to come up with a bill. It's not going to be a blockbuster, but it may be enough to get us through the second quarter. And by then, hopefully, the vaccine will be doing its its thing. Greg, let's let's stay on what's not in this bill. What's not in this bill uh, is 120 million, 120 uh, billion dollars for the Restaurants Act. Why can't lawmakers agree on something like that? Essentially, the government is going to put out out of business thousands of more restaurants. Yeah, it, it's it's inadequate in many respects. You've got to say that it, it sounds crazy to say nine hundred billion dollars is not a lot, but it isn't. I, I think there was a need to do quite a bit more. Even the checks that are going out are, are pretty modest, in my opinion. So that's why I think you know, as we get to well into March, maybe first part of April, we're going to need more medicine. And Greg, as you know, even though the stimulus didn't get passed until now, hasn't seemed to slow down the market rally, right? Because participants were anticipating this was going to happen. Do you see anything going into next year, particularly as we get more penetration of vaccines? Do you see anything related to a further stimulus package that could derail the rally? Yeah, you've got to say the market right now is pretty much priced to per perfection. Uh, you'd have to hope that the so-called variant coming out of the UK is not going to be really, really uh, virulent. Uh, I think you've got to hope that the economy does not slide into recession. I don't think it will. But again, with a market this well priced, uh, you've got to worry a bit that uh, by late March, uh, this economy could be sliding again. You know, and, and Greg, thinking more broadly about um, the fiscal impulse, I guess we could say, from the U.S. government, yeah. we've now seen a couple trillion dollars, two and a half, really, um, sent out the door this year uh, in terms of spending. Uh, it has helped the economy greatly. I think consumers really like getting uh, a check in the mail for whether it's twelve hundred, six hundred dollars. Does this set, in your view, the government on a different trajectory into the next decade of being more willing to do, you know, deficit finance spending in a way that you know, the 2010s are really defined by an austerity impulse after the crisis? It's a really good question, and I would say that uh, there's the very likely uh, chance that the Republicans will suddenly find religion. Uh, they found they had, they had no religion for the last four years on deficits. But now I think that McConnell and other Republicans will say, that's it. We spent too much money. We can't spend this kind of money anymore. I think that mentality is going to be dominant among Republicans in both houses. So to get a big, huge $1 trillion plus package, uh, I think is unlikely. But I do think we could get a four or five, uh, maybe even $600 billion package in, in late March. But the days of just enormous spending are about to come to a close.
And then related to that, Greg, there's some language in um, this latest bill with regards to the Federal Reserve, what it can and cannot do in future emergencies. Now, you know, Republicans say this is a big deal. Democrats say it's fine. You know, 13-3 is not really going anywhere. But do you see fights around the Fed's independence? Again, another feature of the mid-2010s. Do you see that maybe coming back uh, as we go forward here? Well, it certainly was a shot across the bow by Toomey and others. I, I personally thought the the final compromise was pretty artful. Uh, yeah, the Fed can can recreate some lending facilities as long as they're not exactly the same as the two that uh, Treasury has taken back. So to me, there's enough wiggle room in there. And of course, you have a Fed chairman who's determined to keep the funds rate close to zero for three more years. So I think the Fed will be plenty accommodative, even though there was that shot across the bow by some Republicans. Greg, uh, Miles mentioned the stimulus checks that households uh, and consumers will be getting. Do you think the checks are enough that they these consumers will go out, take their checks, and they'll buy new clothes at department stores and consumer spending will, will come on strong and GDP rallies? Or does this, do these checks simply plug a hole? I, I think a lot of people have to pay rent. A lot of people want to buy food. Uh, yeah, sure, there could be some purchases uh, at department stores, but I think basic necessities are, are more crucial here. And I think because of that, we're looking at a very mediocre first quarter. But again, as I said at the beginning, the good news is the first quarter, I think, will not go into recession because of this bill. All right, Greg Valliere with AGF Investments. Greg, always great to get your thoughts. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, have a great holiday and a happy new year. Happy holidays. Thanks.